Hi, welcome to my channel. One of the most popular series on my channel is called the Full Monty. And I've done the Full Monty on the SKS before, but I think it's time for me to update it. Um, the one I did four years ago, I'm going to delete that and replace it with the new one. And uh, what I'm going to do is going to start off with the uh, field stripping first, and then I'm going to do the Full Monty. And I think this time I'm going to go a little bit deeper into... Uh, um, disassembling the uh, sites that I didn't do before. Um, so, let's begin. I'm back. The first thing you do is make sure your safety is on safe. And that means it's moved forward. Okay. This is fire. This is safe. And then, the next thing you do is remove the cleaning kit that's in the back. Okay, it's a trap. All you do is push your finger in and you'll feel something that's push it ouch against your finger. It doesn't hurt a little bit. Then press it and then the cleaning kit comes out. The next thing you do is take the bayonet. This is the handle. Pull it down. Okay because it'll separate from the uh, bayonet lug. See that? Pull it down. And then, take the cleaning rod, push it downwards, and out. Now you can uh, put the uh, bayonet back to where it was. Okay. Now you take the cleaning kit and turn the cap, separate it, pull out, you have a brush, you have a jag, okay. and then you have a pin. Now you don't have to use the pin from the cleaning kit. You can actually use a screwdriver, um, a punch, anything. Um, but I just want to show you what you could do with the cleaning kit. And the first thing you're going to do is uh, make sure that your hammer is back. Okay. So you need to caulk this. Okay. And because there's no rounds in it, your carrier is going to stay backwards. So what you do is just pull that okay. and let the carrier go forward. You can leave a magazine uh, down. Okay. Now, next thing you do is remove the top cover and the way you do this is you can use the pin or you can use a different tool if you want uh, what I normally do is put it along the side of this uh, top cover catch or the and I just pull it up okay and it is right now in this position you need to pull it up like 45 degrees Okay. Yeah, it's a little awkward. Now you can actually do this without using this tool, but sometimes it sticks and you may need a tool. Once you got onto a vertical position, you have to pull it to the right. Okay, as soon as you pull it far enough, you're going to feel the top cover moving backwards and that is because the recoil spring is pushing it backwards okay now since I'm not going to show you how to reassemble this I need you to pay attention how you put the recoil spring back because a lot of people make the mistake of putting it wrong and when you do that 
you're going to end up uh, damaging the recoil spring and uh, experiencing a lot of uh, fail to feed and fail to eject. Okay, you see this squiggly part? Okay. Yeah, SKS, we call them squiggly. And you can see inside the uh, squiggly is a thin rod. And that's the reason why it's squiggly, because there's actually no support. Okay. And then half of the back end is fairly straight. And the reason why you can see there's a thicker inner tube, and that's what keeps it straight. And when you're putting this back, reassembling it, always put the squiggly part into the carrier, like so. Okay. Now, this is why people make a mistake, because they assume the straight one goes in there. And when you're firing, as you can see, when the carrier comes back, it's going to start hitting the, uh, well, okay, if this is like that, as you can see, it's going to be hitting the, the recoil spring. As you can see, the recoil spring is above the, the carrier. And you can see it's going to start damaging it, it's going to start wearing it, and it's going to start weakening it. And that's how you're going to experience um, field to eject, field to fire. Uh, because your carrier will not come all the way back and may miss the round. Okay, so that, remember, squiggly goes into the carrier. Now you could, I will disassemble that uh, during full mounting. Okay, next, you pull the whole carrier all the way back. And what comes out of it is also the bolt. Okay, this is a tilt locking system. Unlike the Type 81 or the AK-47 that has the uh, uh, rotating uh, bolt, this is a tilt. As you can see, in this position, it's opened. It's uh, unlock, and then when it, when the chamber face hits the uh, bolt, the whole bolt moves down. As you can see, in this position, and then because of that, this part locks. It separates very easily. Okay. Now, this is what it looks like. This is the reason why you need to cock it to make sure your hammer is backwards when you're trying to remove it. Otherwise, it's going to hinder it from uh, uh, moving back. Okay. Now, next thing you do, you could uh, you could remove the stock if you feel like, but uh, I normally remove the top handguard, and that's uh, and that's this thing right here. Now, this rifle sticks a bit, so let's go using the pin, and you see this hole in this uh, top uh, top handguard. Uh, catch that's actually where it goes okay. so you take that and move it about 45 degrees angle till you feel that this indent stops where the groove ends okay and then don't do more than 45 degrees and then you can start wiggling this top cover handguard oh. now I know this one sticks a little bit so I'm going to be forced to use a screwdriver and I wedge it between the barrel and the furl the back furl and that's how and that's how I remove it Now be careful when you're removing the top handguard, the piston will slide out easily. This is the piston. Okay. 
the SKS has a um, has a recoil that's uh, not attached. Uh, this piston is not attached to the bolt like the AK. So um, so that that's good. It comes off. Now it's also there's another extension that's inside the uh, sight block. And what you do is that you have to put your thumb in front of the sight block. Okay. If you don't, that extension will fly off and hit my window and definitely break it. Okay, so you have to do that. Take the catch and move it to a 90 degrees. And then you can feel the tension of the extension. And this is the extension, piston extension, and the spring. Okay. Now it's time to remove the magazine and separate the stock from the receiver. And again, okay, now push this catch back in, otherwise you're going to break it. And now, take the same pin and insert it to the back of the trigger guard. There is a catch, as you can see right here, and there is a recess for a pin. Now you could use a screwdriver if you wish, it'll work, and put this upside down, but again, same thing with the catch for the extension and the top hand guard. Make sure these are flat, otherwise you can end up bending them. Okay, and all you do, actually, um, to get a better control of the pin, use the tube from the cleaning kit and insert the pin into the appropriate hole. There is like four different sizes of hole on the side and if this doesn't fit you know it's on the other side so it fits like this. Okay so now once you got into that position hold it like that and make sure you're not gonna bend the catch. You go like that and then you push in and that's it and here the whole trigger assembly comes out you can tell this is a late Chinese production because the trigger guard is not milled it's stamped and it's spot welded to the the entire housing of the trigger. So there it is. You put that right here. And now you could extend the bayonet because you want that out of the way. And you just lift up on the magazine. Okay, it tilts forward. Sometimes it sticks. There it is. It just tilt pivot forward. Okay. Now ignore that thing right there because that's uh, strictly Canadian. What it does, it prevents more than five rounds being uh, put into uh, the magazine. This is a 10 round magazine. Um, a lot of Americans don't understand w what that. Uh, that pin is four, and and when we talk about restricted to five rounds, uh, they don't understand what that means, but that's what it means. It prevents it from loading more than five rounds. Okay, so that's in there. Now, to separate the stock from the receiver, what I normally do is hold it like this, the barrel, and the stock, and just snap it. And it comes off. Okay. 
Okay. This is as far as you go when it comes to field stripping. Okay, you don't go any further than that. And you do not strip the trigger housing any further. You should be able to use a brush, uh, even this, and clean uh, from the outside, and then put some oil uh, on the uh, joints. Okay. Do not strip this. And over here, make sure all the carbon is uh, uh, gone from the face. And also make sure your firing pin rattles. Okay, this sounds very good. And uh, if it doesn't rattle, then of course you need to, you know, separate the, the firing pin and clean it. Uh, it's probably got full of carbon in the, in the hole there. But other than that, uh, do not put any oil in the firing pin. Okay. So, basically, that's it. So when I come back, I'll start working on the full Monty. Okay, to start with the full Monty, let's start with the stock. And um, let's remove the uh, butt plate. And you can see two screws there and they're a um, straight edge you see the ordinary one and um, basically unscrew them. and these are the screws straight edge and the bug plate just pops back it's hollow this is where the cleaning kit goes in and this is the trap door many a times this trap door has pinched my fingers so be careful especially when you're putting it back okay same thing with this uh, rear swivel Now these screws are not the same size as the, the butt plate screws. They're smaller. But I'm sure they'll work, but as you can see. Then just lift up the swivel. And this particular one has three piece. The swivel ring, the upper plate and they seem to be a lower plate okay there's a spring in here this is for the uh, trigger housing to pop it up uh, to uh, disengage uh, the stock from the receiver now it can be a bugger to put back in because uh, um, uh, the other end is a little uh, I guess it's supposed to catch to the side of the wood so I'm not gonna bother removing that but generally you just take a needle nose plier and pull that out and uh, then you have to push it back in now there is also a um, this is uh, the it's a receiver block and you can see that you basically unscrew okay I'm not going to do it because I don't want to disturb it. And it catches on to this part right here. It sits right here. This is what makes the whole gun stable. Okay, okay so that's basically uh, we're done with the stock. Let's put this aside. Now, as far as the receiver concerned, there's not a whole lot you can do. You can't remove the uh, top cover catch because there's a pin in there. Uh, I have done it before where I have to grind down the pin and then drill the pin out and then replace the pin. But right now, you can't do it without uh, drilling it. This bayonet, very simple. There's a screw on the right side. 
you just unscrew it. Okay. And this one I can tell it's been removed before, so I don't worry about it. Quite often it's staked, and uh, and uh, it makes it a little more difficult to remove. This is the handle, slides off, there's a spring, okay, now when you're putting it back together, a lot of people make the mistake of putting this wrong, okay, it does not go like this, the Chinese uh, spike is different from the Russian spike, the Russian spike has four ribs the Chinese have three and it actually if it's three it's two on the side one at the bottom okay and the reason why it's at the bottom is when you fold it it will fit comfortably onto this front furl like this okay Imagine if the two ribs on the side, then it'll sit like this. Then what's the point of having that groove there? That there's a purpose of the groove, and that is to accept the single, as you can see, the single rib. And it sits on the groove. And the two, groove, uh, two ribs is left and right. Okay. So be aware of that. A lot of people make that mistake, and it's so obvious that they uh, put this in wrong. So that's another thing I had to point out to people uh, whenever they reassemble the bayonet, do it properly. Okay, now let's work on the rear sight. Now it's pretty simple. And now it was difficult to push the leaf down and insert the screwdriver in this gap and then push the leaf backwards so I was forced to use a clamp now I can't uh, and this is the setup right here okay so you tighten this up and make sure that you put some sort of a uh, like electrician tape so you don't mar up your uh, leaf so basically this is what it looked like. Okay. Now insert the screwdriver between the leaf and the side block and basically push it back. Clamp the leaf down. Insert the screwdriver and then force it backwards. And when you force it backwards it should snap out like this. Okay, so this spring is a very strong spring. Oh yeah, you can't even push this with your thumb. Now I'll pull that out and show you what it looks like. There. Yeah, it's a pretty strong spring. That uh, is about one millimeter thick. And that goes in here, like that. Now, when you put it back, same thing. Push the sleeve down with a uh, clamp, and then move it forward into these. This hole right here. I, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a cutout that leads from the back to where the hole is and then it pops up. Uh, oh, Now I don't want to screw up the my sight adjustment but of course the post is easy to remove. You just turn left, it comes out and this, um, this sight, uh, basically the base, the post base, you just drift that out. Pretty simple. Do not disassemble 
the trigger housing or the magazine. Uh, you can disassemble the bolt, but I already did a video on that, so I won't do it now. Oh, there's one more thing I need to disassemble, and that is separate the top handguard from uh, the uh, tube. And uh, let's see if I could do that. You just need a punch and drift this pin from, uh, I would say, from the left to right. So let me go get that uh, and I'll be back. Okay, so um, judging from the pin, I took the same pin from the cleaning kit and just uh, drifted it with a hammer from left to right. And as you can see, the top handguard pin is wider on the right side. So I'm just going to have to pull this out. There it is. It's about half inch long and uh, about a little less than an eighth uh, in diameter. Okay. Now the top handguard back furl, or you can call it a gas tube furl, it should just wiggle backwards. There it is. And this is what it looks like. Okay. And then the wood just simply slides back. Okay. The last thing to show you is how to disassemble the recoil spring assembly. Um, get yourself a quarter inch rod about five inches long, stick it to the straight end like that, put on a piece of wood and then hold the spring firm. Okay, like that. Hold the spring firm and push the spring down and you should be able to remove a locking cap from the skinny rod and then let go the spring okay once the spring is not under tension it's about 13 inches long and this is what the cap looks like this is a snap cap uh, it used to be made a uh, mill cap but of course this is the uh, later version Chinese and then you remove the the recoil spring and then of course this is the rod I inserted you need like a 15 inch uh, 5 inch rod okay and you separate the thin rod from the thicker tube simple as that okay very simple to uh, reassemble. Stick this rod back in. Take a quarter inch uh, rod, stick it into the thicker tube. Place it on a piece of wood. Slide the spring all the way down. Okay, till the top of the skinny rod appears then take the locking cap and place it like this and now remove your 5 inch rod and that's basically it so that concludes the uh, SKS uh, Full Monty thank you very much for joining me please hit the like button and please subscribe thank you